Growing up as a kid in the 90s, there was one place I always dreamed of seeing. I read about it in National Geographic and watched endless reruns of Wild America on PBS anytime they were on. That place is Yellowstone. Signed into law in 1872 by President Grant, Yellowstone was established as the world's first national park of its kind. It is home to wolves, elk, and North America's largest living land mammal, as well as over half of all geysers in the world. And in the summer of 2024, I finally got to go. So in the summer of 2024, my wife and I got to go on a great American road trip out west, primarily to see Yellowstone. And our story starts in Denver, where we pick up our van and have to share 27 square feet for the next two weeks in a 100 degree heat wave. And so far, I just got a nice little bit of steam. It's like, pheromones. <laughs> So instead of beelining it straight to Yellowstone, we decided to go somewhere a little bit smaller with less crowds, and we chose Wind Cave. So Wind Cave National Park is only about 34,000 acres. It's the 10th smallest national park in the U.S., but it's the 6th oldest, so it has a long pedigree. Most people come here for the extensive cave system, but we were here in July for the bison running season.
So after hitting the main road through Wind Cave National Park, we decided to hit some of the back roads, uh, MPS 5 and 6, which I highly recommend you do. As long as you have a vehicle that has a 5 inch ground clearance, you should be good to go. So the second rock stars of Wind Cave National Park, in my opinion, are the prairie dogs. You'll find their burrows everywhere, usually along the roads, sometimes like even in the road, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Uh, but they're super flamboyant, they're really cute, and they have a really close relationship with the bison on the prairie. So keep your eyes peeled and you'll see them. So after lunch, we decided to head into Custard State Park, which is just north of Wind Cave. We found a nice little hike. We didn't see any uh, wildlife on the hike, but it just felt good to stretch the legs after being in the car for so long. Recording you when you have it like that? Yep. Crazy, huh? With the light fading, we decided to drive back up to an overlook. I'll put the name of the overlook here um, to just watch the sun set and take in the sights and sounds of the prairie, which were absolutely magical. So upon heading back to the campground, 
we encountered some of our most intimate encounters with wildlife in the park yet. And it was just us. After having breakfast with the local residents, we packed up the van and hit the road once again. And as we passed through the gates of the campground, we were bid one final farewell by the bison herd, which flanked both sides of the road. After about a four hour drive from Wind Cave, we arrived at our final destination, 
Dead Swede Campground in the Bighorn National Forest. So I was curious about the name of the campground and the graves that I found. So I went on Google and searched up George B. Henton's name and found an article on the Sheridan Press uh, about his grave. And before it was a campground, it was a site of a timber mail. Um, so the article says, Circumstances of his death were reported in the Sheridan Post on February 25th, 1910. Henton had been a logger working at the Wood Rock Sawmill, but had abruptly quit his job two weeks prior and had gone to Ranchester, where he spent his life savings on a drinking spree. He then made his way back up the mountain and returned to the Thai camp in poor physical health. He was unable to procure any additional liquor and liquor there and appeared to be a nervous wreck. Henton, who was approximately 50 years old, approached the company doctor about obtaining sublandum, a tincture that contained powdered opium, the arrow's equivalent of morphine. Suspecting Henton intended to overdose, the doctor instead prepared another solution that was harmless. When Henton realized the preparation was not going to work for his intended means, he inflicted self-harm with an axe. As for the other graves, um, they're graves of timber workers whose names have been lost to history and they're just buried in the campground to this day. But it is a chilly morning here in the Bighorn Mountains. It's um, about 52 degrees uh, when we woke up this morning. And you can hear generators already going. <laughs> but I want to get up to the, I want to come in through the uh, north uh, east entrance of Yellowstone, uh, which will take us through Lamar Valley on our way to our campground. So uh, trying to maximize our drive time, head up to Lot Life, you know, as we're getting to our destination. 
and then we'll uh, do some other stuff around Yellowstone, Central Yellowstone. Kind of hoping I can get some better picture of Yellowstone of the bison, because in one cave, it, it was amazing, no doubt, and we were close to them, but there was this annoying fence um, in the background on a lot of my shots in the video, which kind of takes away from it. And, uh, Wind Cave is a small park, and it's like 33,000 acres, I think. And they have to keep, there's it's like basically fenced in all the way around with cattle gates. So unfortunately there is, uh, you have to deal with fencing when the, when the bison are, you know, traveling along the fence. And that was just our, our luck there that day. Stop it. Trusting your instincts, realize and knowing looks different to each when living authentic. Do more exploring, a deeper than knowing. Just what is essential for life that is thriving? Go deep, mute out the chatter, feel it, burn off the fire. Story time. So we arrived at our campsite at Lily Lake, and it was a prime spot right on the lake. And it was almost uh, too good to be true, and it was. Within ten minutes of setting up to cook dinner, a m million mosquitoes came out and attacked us. It was god awful. So we ended up packing up all our stuff and heading down the road to Cook City, uh, Montana, where we thankfully got a hotel room and a shower. And we got a good night's sleep because in the morning a dream would come true.
stop to the side of the road to shoot some of these wildflowers. It's a little dangerous because we're right on the side of the road. You getting some shots? Do you know all of them? There's 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 some baby yellow. This is like columbine, isn't there something? No, this is not columbine, but look, there is wild columbine. There's yellow columbine. We checked into our campsite at Bridge Bay, promptly had a nap and some food, but it decided in the evening we would head towards Prismatic Springs, which is about a one hour drive away.
quite huge. <laughs> There's your wish, honey. Hmm. There's your wish. Have to be patient. Happy 38th birthday. Wow, it just keeps going. Happy 38th birthday. Oh, welcome to day two of Yellowstone. We, we're in a marina car park. And um, that's because we had a campground and someone took our spot. We arrived at like 10 o'clock at night and someone was in our spot. So we came down here and slept in the parking lot. Luckily we had some uh, bathrooms here. Jeez, can't coordinate. And say we're going to do the northern part of the park. See what we can see. Mammoth springs and all that. Alrighty, onward. Healthy brunch. Hard boiled egg, asparagus, and pickled vegetables, and pesto, pesto provolone, mayonnaise, grilled cheese. And your sriracha topping. And sriracha. Rice.
thunderstorm soon passed, but so had our time in Yellowstone. After a good night's sleep, this time in our campsite, we packed up our gear and headed south into the Grand Tetons National Park. And yes, before you ask, we drove by the barn, but I didn't take a shot because there was at least a hundred other people there with their cameras up with tripods, and it's been done a bazillion times before. And that's the end of this story. You can't end better than mac and cheese on top of a mountain overlooking the Grand Tetons. Doesn't get better than that. So I had lots of fun going to Yellowstone. It's everything I ever dreamed of. I got a ton of photos and video that I'm super proud of. As always, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Um, this is the kind of content I love doing. And just as a reminder, the recipe for the mountain mac and cheese in the description. See ya.